Welcome to the Prevision version 9 tutorial series. In this video, we'll be importing DBC files. Features and benefits. The DBC import feature lets a Prevision user quickly populate a model with an existing DBC file. Most of our customers have previously created network artifacts, but they only exist in DBC format. The DBC import feature allows these customers to not lose that effort. The DBC import allows the user to select a full import or an import and merge, which merges the DBC content into an existing Prevision product line. Prerequisites for the demo. DBC import is typically one of the first things a new user does. In an attempt to bring in work that has previously been completed. A DBC contains the communication related information for a single CAN network. To get the most out of this video you should have Prevision installed on your machine, be familiar with the model tree structure of a product line, and have one or more sample DBC files to be able to import. Tutorial Overview so we'll be covering a couple of different use cases. The first is a full import. With a full import we bring in the entire DBC file and create a new product line structure as a part of the current design model. We also have the import with merge capability as a use case to cover and in this one we import the entire DBC file but will merge that content in with an existing model structure which will allow uh, cases where you may have a signal that is used more than once in the model to not uh, appear duplicated. Okay so let's get started doing some DBC file imports. Um, I have a, a blank sort of empty model uh, that I've just created. Um, it has the product line structure in it but there's no content at the moment. So the first thing that we'll do is select file, import, and then you get the list of possible import types that Prevision supports. So in this case we're going to choose DBC import and then hit next. So the first thing that Prevision asks us uh, to describe is how you want the uh, byte ordering, Intel display style, and Motorola display style set for the artifacts you're about to bring in. Um, this is your choice. I typically use Motorola because that's what I've used in the past and that's what most of the files that I've looked at use. Um, but this is just based on your preference and, and what your choices are or, or what your settings were uh, in the DBC files you created. So then we choose next again. Now we need to choose the file. And this will give you a file picker. So I have a generic DBC file that was available from Canoe that I'm using uh, for these demo uh, videos. So I'll just choose the first one the Comfort DBC and so there are lots of artifacts obviously that Prevision found that are available for bringing in. Um, you have the choice of a prefix for the created folder. Now because I'm going to be doing several imports I'm just going to take that prefix right out because what I intend to do is create a new product line and merge other content into it. So I'd prefer not to have that comfort um, uh, prefix on everything that comes in. So now we have some other options. Do we want to synthesize a software level? I'm going to say yes. So what this will do is create uh, software components based on the ECUs and the things that they transmit and receive uh, as ports on those uh, software components. Uh, you can make that frame based or signal based. I typically always choose signal based because I really don't want my software to know how frames are constructed but again this is a choice uh, that you can make on your own. 
Uh, I want to map timing attributes of frames to PDUs because DBC uses frame as the container for these types of timing attributes, whereas in an AutoSAR based design or in Prevision, we make those artifacts part of a PDU. Uh, import global table values. This is so you get your enumerations. Uh, force a J1939 protocol. If what you were importing was a J1939 DBC file, then you could choose this, but uh, these are not, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. And calculate and set internal signal value limits. Again, this is just for creation of your um, data types and structures and copy methods. So the import is now happening and the result will be shown in the model tree when it's complete. So we have this import of this DBC comfort So it's created a brand new product line. Now, even though it says import DBC comfort, this is just letting you know that this is an import package of the comfort uh, DBC file. But you notice that there's no comfort uh, prefix on any of the other things that are located in this model. So you can see that we have software compositions for the devices that were uh, in that DBC file. We have hardware components, ECUs in other words. We have communication. So we have a frame layout view with frames, PDUs, and signals. So let's open up the frame layout view and look at a frame. So you can see this frame has only one signal and a PDU so I guess this is window position so the result of this DBC import is we have a tremendous number of artifacts that have been created just on the import which means that we don't have to type them in again so now that we've got this new design model and new product line, we can move that up into the existing design model. Actually, what I'll do is just, I'm going to grab this product line and just bring it into the existing design model. So now I've got two different product lines here. Oops. There we go. So this is the product line that we just created. So I'm going to call this um, DBC import product line. So now the next thing that we're going to do is let's bring in another DVC file and merge it into this existing structure. So we'll do just like we did before, file, import, DVC import. I'm going to make the same settings that I made before. This time I'm going to use the powertrain DVC file. I'm not going to have a prefix. I'm going to keep the synthesized software level, keep the signal based, keep map timing, keep import global table values, and keep calculate set and uh, 
calculate internal signal value limits. So on the next screen, I'm going to be choosing the import with merge. So now I'm going to be required to do some additional steps. So now I need to say, where do I want these artifacts to land when they come in? So the software type package, I'm going to select and I have a DBC import product line. I have a function library and a software type package. And once I select a valid target package, I'll be allowed to continue. If I don't select a valid target package, it won't let you continue. So I want all of these things to go to the DBC import product line that we just created. So I'm going to be selecting all of these to end up in the locations that are suggested. So in this case, it did not choose a package that was in the DBC import product line. So I'm going to choose a mapping folder or a mapping package that's in the DBC import product line. Now it's saying that that one is not um, valid. So this one is. So I'm just going to choose it. And the communication package again in the DBC import layout package data type package that looks good library package again that looks good definition set again looks good what was suggested and a network management package uh, there doesn't appear to have been a network management package in the uh, DBC import so I'm just going to allow this to be put into the different product line to see if we get anything in there so this is all that's necessary to, to be able to choose but you can also make some other settings and we're not going to go into that right now uh, but once these are set you can click finish and the import and merge will happen Okay, so now if we go and look, for instance, in our hardware architecture, we have more components than we used to have. So we have another set of powertrain engine and this vector powertrain. Um, they appear in a component package that's nested underneath this components. So the simple thing to do is to just grab them and copy them up to the parent components package and then we can just delete this empty one so now all of the components that were in those two DBC files are now here and the same is true for any of the other things that we looked at before so for instance in the software compositions area we've got all of these in the same one uh, because they, they all seem to merge into the same software package so we don't have to do that moving and deleting of, a, of an empty package in this one it just went straight into the 
compositions package. So this gives you an idea of how quickly you can end up with a tremendous number of artifacts that are brought in and uh, populate your model um, without a whole lot of work. So you can see all of these PDUs, there's more PDUs than we had before. So this is everything that was in both of those DBC files. So that was what I intended to cover in this tutorial video. Uh, thanks for watching.